You got four different development teams, each using a different front end framework. React, Quick, Solid, Vue, and you want to make sure that they all use the same design system across all of them. So the fonts and colors are synchronized across the board. How are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that in this video using a combination of Turbo Repo to manage all the code and Vanilla Extract to do all of the CSS in a cool, type safe way. So here we've got our example applications. We can go and change, for example, the header colors in one single place and have them automatically get changed across all of our applications, regardless of the different frameworks that we use. It's really cool. And all of it, of course, is available to you on GitHub for free in a link in the description right down below. Before we get into it, I do want to say that I'm building a Next.js course called Pro Next.js.dev. You should head on over to that site. There's a link to that in the description as well, where you can sign up for notifications about the course. I'm really excited about it. And you can get your questions answered every single day about Next.js and React. It's great stuff. I do want to say that this video is sponsored by our friends over at Brilliant. More about them in just a bit. In the meantime, let's get right into it. All right, what we're looking at here is the completed set of applications. Of course, all of this code is available to you for free on GitHub in a link in the description right down below. First thing we need to do is set up a turbo repo so we can get this all going. So let's go take a look at the turbo repo setup instructions. So we're going to use the instructions for PMPM, and I'm going to go into the van design system directory and then paste in that command, put in the existing directory, PMPM. All right, let's bring that up in VS Code. So what Turbo Repo has done is created two primary directories for us. One is apps, where our applications go, and the other is packages, where our library packages that are shared between those applications go. In this case, it's created two different web applications for us, docs and web. We'll use web. That is a Next.js app-based application. We'll just use that as a starting point for Next.js and React. With packages, there's already an existing UI library in there. We're just going to ignore that. We're going to create our own package called styles, which is going to have our design system. To do that, I'm going to go into the packages directory. And then within there, I'm going to use UI as a template by just copying it into a new directory called styles. Now let's go take a look in styles. So I'm just going to get rid of a bunch of stuff. I'll get rid of this turbo directory, button and header, indexes. I'm just going to export default true. And the package JSON, I'm going to rename this to styles. And then I'm going to remove any connection to React since we want this to be cross platform portable. So now we need to bring in vanilla extract. So, what is vanilla extract? Vanilla extract is a zero runtime CSS system. Vanilla, because it creates vanilla CSS, and extract, because it extracts those classes from the application and builds them at build time so that you have just basic CSS that's going out to the browser. There's no CSS in JS, even though you actually define the CSS in JavaScript. So the next thing we want to do is add vanilla extract CSS to our styles project. All right, we're in the package directory. We want to go into the styles directory, and then we're going to do pmpm add from there. A vanilla extract, but we want to make sure that it's in development mode because it's only a development dependency. Obviously, everything is done in build. There's zero runtime, therefore, it can be a development dependency. Okay, it looks like we're good to go. Now, the first thing I want to lay down is a global theme. So, those would be the colors or fonts or styles we want to have globally. So, I'm going to create a new file called theme.css.ts. That .css in the file name is really important. Vanilla extract is going to look to, for that particular extension, and that's where you're going to define all of your styles and your themes, like we're going to define our theme here. We're going to use create global theme to create a global theme that has our colors in it. In this case, background color, header background, header text, as well as an accent color. You can define any color system you want. This is just what I came up with for this particular example. All right, now building on top of that, we're going to build our body style. So that's going to be the style for our body tag. We're going to put that in globals.css.ts. Again, we got to make sure that it's got that .css. And now we see that we bring in the variables that we created in that theme. And then now we're going to use that variable inside of the background to give ourselves a nice linear gradient. All right, now we've got enough to find that we can actually see it in our web application. So let's go and try it. Let's go bring it into our app's web. And the first thing that we need to do to do that is to go into our package JSON. So now instead of UI, which has the button in it, we're going to go and change 
UI to styles because we want to bring in those styles. And then we're going to go and clean up our app because there's a lot of stuff we can just take out. We're not going to bring any of that in. And our layout looks good, but we're going to want to bring in those global styles into our layout. And it's as easy as that. But of course, we have to configure next to actually be cool with vanilla extract. So let's go and go in our terminal and then go into our apps directory and into web. And inside this web directory, we want to bring in the plugin for Next.js. That's the next plugin library, and we can bring it in in development mode because, again, we're going to do this all at build time. Now, over in our next config, we're going to bring in the vanilla extract plugin, and then we're going to use the create vanilla extract plugin to create with vanilla extract, and we'll wrap our configuration in that with vanilla extract. Okay, let's go back up to the top level, and we'll do pm pm dev. All right, so now we're getting this cool repeating linear gradient. So why is that? Well, let's go take a look over at our code. So in our globals, we've got our background. It's a linear gradient that goes from our constant color, the color background, to black. And because there's really no content, it's just getting repeated over and over and over again. If we want to go and see if we can actually change that background, we can do that really quickly. We'll just change it to like a pink. And now if we go back over to our browser, we can see pink repeating over and over and over again as we've redefined that linear gradient. So we have a live connection between our styles library and our app. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is create a header. To do that, I'm gonna go and create a new set of styles. And this container now defines a div style that we're gonna use across all of our applications to contain the header. So to implement on this, I'm gonna go over into the app, into our layout. I'm gonna bring in our container style from that header. I'm going to bring in next image because we're going to have an image. And then we're going to have a React logo, so I need some place to put that. So I'm going to create a new folder called public. And into there, I'll put the React logo. And then within that body tag, we're going to bring in our header. And our header is just a div that uses a class name. That class name has the container that we got back from the vanilla extract. And that's just a string. It's gone and actually created the CSS for us and just given us back a string, which is the class name. So by the time that it gets here, all the vanilla extract stuff is basically gone. Let's go take a look and see. And there is our swanky new header with our repeating red background. All right, the next thing we're going to do is put some content within this page, and that's going to demonstrate how to use local styles. So you're probably going to want to have a combination of styles that are specific to your application, and then these shared global styles. This is going to show you how to do that. So over in our app directory, I'm going to create a new file called page.css.ts. So it's kind of that same .css extension, just going to use it locally. And then we're going to bring in style from vanilla extract, and we're going to use that to create a grid layout using a flex that wraps. So we're going to use that to bracket our content. So we'll bring in that grid, and we'll use that grid by using it as the class name on a div. All right, so what do we want to do with this page? Well, we want to have a list of product cards. So first I'm going to bring in our products. We're going to have one mouse that looks like it's from the 1950s, and another one that looks kind of cyberpunky, I guess. So now the next thing we want to do is go and put these in a card. So we're going to create a couple more styles over in our shared styles because we want to have cards that look the same between all our applications. So let's go back into our shared styles. I'm going to create a new file called card.css. And into there, we're going to define our card styles. So we're going to have a container for the card. We're going to have a style for the image, a style for the content section below the image, and then styles for the action section that's going to hold any buttons, and also the title and description styles. And then finally, we want a shared button style. Of course, we always want that sort of thing. So let's go create a new file for the button shared style. All right, so here's our styling for button. It's got a lot of the usual border radius and all of the rest of it to make a nicely styled button. It's amazing how much you have to put on a button now to make it look good. But of course, a lot of us are coming out of the Tailwind world, and this is going to look very verbose. That's because, yes, vanilla extract is very vanilla. It doesn't have any of those cool shorthand things like Tailwind does, although you can add it using vanilla extract sprinkles, but you get to define your own shorthands in this case. All right, now we got our button and we got our card. Let's go and implement on those. So we'll bring in our button style first and then create a button that just uses that class name. And we bring in the styles for card as well as next image because we want to use that awesome next image component. And then we define our card as a React server component that takes an image source, an image alt, as well as a title and a description. And it then puts a little order now button at the bottom. All right, let's go create two cards. We'll create one for our cyberpunk mouse and then another for our retro's 50 mouse. Let's give it a try. 
All right, that is looking really sweet. And of course we have the ability to make live changes as we did before. We can just, for example, go back down to our theme, change this up back to that green. And now we have something like what we saw at the beginning of the video. All right, now that we have the fundamentals of vanilla extract down and we've implemented it using Next.js and React, it's time to re-implement this again using Solid and Quick and Vue. But before we get into that, when it comes to CS fundamentals, there's no better place to learn CS fundamentals than Brilliant. I am so proud to be partnering with Brilliant.org because they are a fantastic place to learn all of the computer science fundamentals that are going to make you a better engineer. Yeah, you can learn a lot about the basic maths, you can learn about differential equations, and learn more about how AI works, but I'm talking about the cool computer science stuff, stuff like data structures and algorithms that show up a lot in our interviews. Now I know, like a lot of you, I am self-taught. I had to learn data structures and algorithms from books, and I can tell you, that was not a lot of fun. Brilliant makes it fun, because the way that they teach it is interactive and graphic and they keep track of your progress. So as you're going along, you can see that you're becoming a better engineer as you go. From reading your comments and working with you through a lot of issues, I can tell you that a lot of you have issues with memory management in JavaScript. You think it might not be a thing, but it's a thing, and it's a thing that you need to understand and that Brilliant teaches really, really well. So if you find the topic of references difficult, let Brilliant teach it to you in a fun and engaging way. So start your learning adventure today on Brilliant by going to brilliant.org slash Jack Harrington. There is a link in the description right down below. You'll get your first 30 days for free. And for the first 200 of you that sign up, you'll get 20% off of that Brilliant annual subscription. Thank you, Brilliant. So let's get on to trying this out in a couple of different environments. Let's go back into our apps directory. All right, let's try this again, but let's try this with Quick. So we're gonna use Vite for our Quick application. So now we have a Quick version locally. And in there, I'm gonna go and again, alter the package JSON to bring in our styles. So to do that, I add styles as a dependency, but I use the workspace to say that this is a library that you can find in the workspace. And PMPM is gonna handle all of that live linking for us. Now to use vanilla extract, we need to add some libraries. We need to add the vanilla extract CSS, we also need to add the Vite plugin as opposed to the next plugin that we had before. And we go over to our Vite config, we bring in our vanilla extract plugin, and we just add it to our list of plugins. Now let's go give ourselves a couple of mice, in this case a dragon mouse and a steampunk mouse. And then over on our main, we're gonna go and bring in our CSS. Now we can get rid of our local CSS, and we can turn our app CSS into a TS file and define that grid like we did before. Now let's go see what we have an app. We have a counter in there, let's get rid of all that. And let's just start out with a header, and then let's give it a go. Now if you run pmpm dev at the top level, you'll actually run all of the servers simultaneously. So over here in Arc, I can create a split view and now we're looking at the quick version over in this other panel on port 5173, which is the V default. And we've got our header, pretty good looking. All right, let's bring in our button style and then create our button component. In quick, you use the component dollar function to define a component and define our card. Again, just another invocation of the component dollar. Then we gotta bring in that grid that we're gonna use to lay everything out. And then finally down in our app, we're gonna go and add a couple of cards for the dragon mouse and the steampunk mouse. Let's give it a try. Woo, looking beautiful. Let's go make a change of styles to see if we still have that cool live connection. This time let's make it blue. All right, refreshes quickly on quick, but it requires a refresh manually on next. Eh, that's okay. All right, now for solid and view, we're just gonna go and bring in those projects and I'll walk you through them. All right, for the solid version, we did exactly the same thing. We brought in styles as part of the workspace, and then we brought in the vanilla extract CSS and the V plugin. We then used the v vanilla extract plugin in our V config. Then over in the index, we brought in our main styles, and we brought in the grid in app CSS TS, very familiar. And then in our app JSX, we're bringing in all of those styles from the styles, and we are using similar kind of components that we would see in React. Basically just create 
functions that have button and card, and then you use them as you would in React. The only differences here is its class instead of class name, and then for style, I'm just using a string to have the styles on it, for example, the width and the height of the image. Once it's save, take a look, and there you go, a really cool mid-century modern looking mouse in solid. Finally, let's have a look at view. Now the view version is very similar in terms of its setup. We add a styles dependency just using styles and then the vanilla extract CSS and plugin. Vconfig, exactly the same thing. The differences come when you get to the view part, which is instead of, in this case, for example, us using curly braces, header container, we're just going and doing colon class header container to reference header container as a local variable inside of that app. So pretty simple view-based mechanics as opposed to the React or Quick or Solid mechanics. All right, let's go take a look at what view looks like. And there you go, our final example with view using exactly the same classes. All right, now let's try something a bit more drastic. Let's go and change the colors of the header. So we'll just flip the header colors. Hit save. And now across the board, we've changed our header colors from white text on a black background to black text on a white background. All right, well, I hope this gets you excited about the potential of using a shared design system in your company or on your project. But of course, I would be remiss if I didn't say that you can use different technologies here. You could use NX instead of Turbo Repo. You can probably use something like a Tailwind setup or other CSS extraction setups as opposed to vanilla extract. I will say that this is probably the cleanest one that I've seen. I did see a Panda version of this, but it was a bit more fiddly when it comes to monorepos. These kind of things can be a little bit fiddly, and this was the most straightforward and clean that I've seen, and that's why I did the video around this particular setup. Of course, in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. Be sure to check out pronextjs.dev and go and sign up for that newsletter. It's free. Can't beat that kind of pricing. In the meantime, of course, if you really like the video, just hit that like button. And if you really, 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 really like the video, then hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.